So, calm. I beat myself to you. Guys, I've tried to record this video so many times and it just really hasn't worked out. Um, I don't know, for me, I feel like there's just so much to unpack and I just want to make sure that everything I say comes from a good place, you know, from the heart. I don't want, you know, this is not for no mix-up or anything like that. Um, I just kind of want to just, I feel like going forward and to just close this chapter on my life, I just need to be transparent. And the truth is, the last year really hasn't been easy. Like, it's been really hard. And yeah, like I even have somebody on the phone here yeah, because obviously <laughs> like, I feel like it's a lot in it. Like, and just sitting down here speaking to the camera is just not gonna cut it because it's just so much that unpacked. Like so much has happened, and I just want to make sure that I don't know. I just kind of need somebody there in it. This is not. I just can't stare in front of the camera and just talk. So yeah, if you really want to know what's been going on with me, my house, what's been happening since the last year or so. Um, just stay tuned for the rest of the video, listen with an open heart and this is just mainly here for you guys to like maybe learn a lesson, maybe somebody can relate or something. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into the video. Alright, cool. So as you know, like last year, at the beginning of la last year, everything was fine. I just came off back chat, like, I was on online shows, I was doing my thing, like I had my little, you know, adverts that I was doing, business was going up, like I was actually, you know, my career was coming together because I was being very active and you know, like I could actually see that I was reaping the fruits of my labours and everything that I've been putting in, all the hard work and stuff, it was finally working out. So that caused like an elevation with my mental health, like I was kind of getting better and I can just see that life was kind of turning around, in it? Because, you know, remember I was in the room, in it? Because you've been there. Like, mm. it was just very small, like that was all I had. So in that room, like I was going through a lot in it. Anything that I was going through, it was just in that room. My darkest moments there. So it's like to actually see that my life was improving after just, you know, wanting to see a change for so long. That was, you know, I felt good about that. And so it comes, I was able to get my car because I passed my test when I was 17 and, you know, I lost my car when my mum kicked me out and made me homeless and that. So I was without a car for a while and that car gave me a sense of freedom, another place to escape to. I was able to, you know, show up in places and do my thing and just be able to be up and active. Do you know what I mean? And I felt good because I was able to maintain another asset do you know what I mean like, that was another I lost it and I got it back so to me I felt good so yeah like obviously social anxiety cut because remember when I was going through my situation before like I didn't have anyone around me like I literally isolated myself so I didn't have people I wasn't really going out and obviously as life was going up like going up and on and up for me like I was opening up myself to people it was reflective in my content like I was going out I was interacting I was making friends and everything was cool in it so yeah moving on from that I'd say yeah I was doing my thing and all of that met some people made some friends and so it comes so like as I was on the up and up someone needed help ended taking the person in because when I prayed it I was like not gonna lie everything that I've been through all that I represent I know what it's like to go through something and need help and nobody here yeah. I know what it's like to go through the toughest times or even just crying I needed someone to save me and no one's there do you know what I mean like people know what it's like to be in such a down time and need somebody to help and assist and when you've gone through certain struggles it's like if you see somebody else and they need help I'm that kind of guy that will help because despite whatever like I've always been the person that will try to you know push somebody or help them to see the potential within themselves or if I, like I'm not like that kind of person that will lead you astray that like, anyone that's ever come around me they know like I don't just have anyone around me. So from I even say you're a friend, acquaintance or family or whatever, I'm going to do my 110% or else you wouldn't be here. Do you know what I mean? Mm, so yeah. I can't lie, looking back, that was the wrong decision to also make because where I was just coming out the woods myself, I would, like looking back, I didn't deep the fact that people come with baggage that you don't know about. And whereas I'm just coming out of certain situations as in depression, anxiety, this, this, that, and the next, I don't know what the other per what other energies the other person's bringing in or what's behind them type thing. So it's like that energy, you know how energy transference is real? Like when you're around certain people, if they're doing certain shit, it's going to rub off on you. Like it's just natural. That's the way of life type of thing. So people need to realise that when you're helping certain people, know your limits it's not everyone you're supposed to help sometimes when you're going through certain struggles you just need to keep your head straight because you can't give from what you don't have so yeah. during that time like you know i'm helping i'm doing what i'm supposed to do i'm still trying to maintain my thing my career's on the up and up like 
um, yeah, during that time, I'm signing contracts, doing what I'm supposed to do. Everyone on, like, people that had me on Snapchat would see that I signed a brand deal last year. And that was because people them had seen me on social media from time ago and they were like, oh, like, it was like, a, I can't lie, it was a lot of money. It was a lot of money. So, yeah, I was like, yeah, cool. Like, I'm putting in the work, I'm feeling positive. You know what I mean? Things are, you know what I mean? Struggles no more. I'm able to pay my rent and just feel comfortable. Don't own nothing. Um, yeah. So from that, you know, I have my platform and I always try to encourage people and be like, yo, like, you know, this is where my life started, but I'm still going. I was homeless at the age of 18. You lost be encouraged and delivered and I made a particular post. So when I posted that post on Instagram now, this was back in February, and the basis of it was was just that, oh, like, um, you know, like, I was just basically, like, recapping my story, what I've been going through. Like, obviously, my mom kicked me out. I was homeless at the age of 18. Went through my mental health. I'm going through my mental health stuff, but you have to prioritise yourself, put yourself first. There's strength and struggle. Just, you know, my encouragement post that I post on Instagram. My mom saw it and didn't like it. Now, at that time, from way before that, my mom said this thing where like, anytime she knows somebody that I'm around, or if there's like a biz, if I have a business relationship, she will interfere with that. And it's one of these things where like, obviously I don't hold anything up in my heart for my mom, but I'm not gonna hide and protect her actions because at the end of the day, we're all big people. Like, despite her being my mom, there's certain levels of accountability that you do need to take. And whereas, as your son, I do try to, like, communicate certain things with you. I feel like you do need to be able to respect the fact that I am on my own journey. I am whatever, whatever. So, at the time, she saw that. And any little time she sees me around somebody that she might know, she's interfering with my business relationships. Like, you know, there's been so many times where she's messaged people where she shouldn't have, making the situation awkward. And my thing is, is, like, you put me out of the house. You said you no longer wanted to be my mom. I've been left to fend for myself. You shouldn't be interfering with my businesses or the way how I'm trying to make a living because you turned around and said, I don't want to be a part of your life anymore. So, cause you don't want to be a part of my life anymore. Let, like, let me live my life, make me make my way. Mm. From, I'm not like on social media, like bringing you down or dragging you, then you shouldn't have a problem with anything because at the end of the day, I'm just telling my story. But if you don't like the way how you sound in that story, then maybe you need to reflect within yourself and say, yo, maybe what I did was fucked up. Like, the situation is, I can't change the past. You kicked me out and made me homeless at the age of 18. I can't change that. That's where everything stems from. The fact that I'm on social media today, the fact that I'm going through what I'm going through was because of that moment. I can't change the past. So, if that doesn't make you sound good, then maybe what you did was maybe messed up then. I can't change history to suit you and accommodate your feelings. It's not like I'm rubbing it in your face. It's not like I'm like, you know, I have some sort of personal vendetta. I pray for her every day. Like, without fail, since I've left that house, I pray for her all the time. Not one ounce of hate in my heart. So, it's like, to, to see that you still go through certain lengths to try and make my life difficult, although I'm just trying to make my way and I'm just trying to encourage people and I'm still trying to make positive out of the situation that... I didn't need to, like, obviously I didn't answer none of this, so I'm still just making a way, making do with what I have. And you got to realise when you wasn't there, these people were there. Do you know what I mean? When I didn't have no family, no friends, these people were there. So back to the story where, she, yeah, anytime I'm in business relationships, she's messaging the people, she's interfering with my life, she's creating certain problems, things like she's just making life difficult. And you don't know this big, long time woman, this big woman I used to part with, you know, you don't know exactly who I'm talking about. Now, this person needs to understand that I had nothing but genuine, it was not, not much genuine. And you also need to understand I didn't know this woman from social media. I knew this woman from a child. I have pictures in that room right now that I can bring out from me being a kid and she's in them photos. I didn't meet this woman on social media. So a lot of you are thinking, oh, this clout chasing thing, no, it wasn't that. I didn't approach her off the internet and I didn't meet her on the internet. Matter of fact, most people that you see me with, I didn't meet on the internet. I've known them for a long time mainly through who I've met through my mom because my mom is quite known in it so when I used to have certain birthdays certain people are turning up as a kid if you're Jamaican you know how the kids parties go so so yeah so obviously me and this woman was, was powering and stuff like that she saw the post that I posted on Instagram and like yeah at the time me and her was powering the videos were going up like at the time 
Um, yeah, everything was genuine. We both made the agreement that we was going to do social media together because at the end of the day, at the time, she wasn't doing what she was doing now. I was more bait in the UK. She had more of the Jamaican audience and she just said, you know, people like seeing us together, so let's run up the videos. I was the mastermind behind everything. So everything was like prearranged. Obviously, we have our personal relationship, but she both agreed because we're both doing the same thing. And if people like it, let's run up the videos. So I came up with the ideas. I showed up at, house, at our house to film and that's what we did. So my mom at the time, Obviously, that lady loses her social media account, right? I'm at the time last year, there was a little act around me. My views was going up. You lost go check the page. There was little views going up. So, an opportunity came where it's like, cool, my mom goes to her because she sees that post and she's like, oh, um, he's making me look bad on social media. Can you go and talk to him? Now, it's not the first time she did that. The first time she did that, I didn't even want to go too deep into the situation. The first time she did that, like, it, end up, it ended up in an argument between me and the woman. I just said, listen, that's me and my mom's problems. My mom shouldn't be coming to you and getting you involved. And I said to my mom, whatever problems that me and you have is between me and you. Don't bring anybody else into it because at the end of the day, when I'm addressing you, I'm addressing you. I'm not bringing anyone else involved. If I've got something to say, I say it directly to your face and neither can I come and control your life. So please don't be contacting the people and making situations awkward because what you're doing is you're stopping them from working with me. It's making the situation awkward and then what? You're making my life hard in order to... I'm out here hustling, you get what I mean? So, so she goes to the woman now and then she says, so the woman calls me and then she's like, oh, your mom's saying that you're making her look bad on social media. You need to stop talking, you need to stop talking about you just seeking clout of your situation and this is that and the next. And I looked around and I said, not gonna lie, this is my life, my story. You can't tell me what to do, number one. And I would like if you just please stay out my family problems and leave it at that. I called my mum back and I said, wow. Well, and then she also said, oh, she said to me, oh, if I go on social media and I talk about my mental health or speak about my mom or whatever, whatever again, I'm going to go on social media and I'm going to bring it down and whatever, whatever. So same time now, I call my mum and I'm like, so you really called this woman to do this to me? As in your son, you have another big woman threatening to go online and spend all different types of accusations and lies about your son for the sake of what? Why would you do that? And we're not talking about little local people, you know. Remember, like, bare people are watching us, you know. I'm thinking, why would you do that? She's like, oh, um, I know she's the only person that could get through to you. You have my number. You have my number. It's not the first time you've done this. We've had this conversation over and over again. Oh, that's the only person I knew could get through to you, so I called her to see what she... So from that, I'm like... You, as the mum, has given somebody else a permission to disrespect your son publicly. Does that look good? And all then, I still didn't disrespect her, you know? So I said, cool, say no more. So that situation happened, and I just want to set the record straight. I didn't hack anybody's page. None of that type of shit. Everything she said was a lie. And there's a reason why I, after that situation, I didn't address anything more, because more things happen after that. Do you know what I mean? Certain things in life, you've got to look. I have nothing to prove. I'm not going to continuously go back and forth with somebody on social media, especially when I know what journey I'm on. At that time when that situation happened, I told you lots, I just signed a brand deal. Do you know what happened? When certain things were being said, it was screen recorded and put on YouTube. People are then going on YouTube and seeing certain titles with my name in it. And you know what happened? I lost that deal. All the hard work that I was putting in, I lost that deal. And you lots have to remember, I've been I've been working so hard to just kind of do my thing. And remember, different places we was at. She wasn't doing what I was doing. Yeah, I was working with brands like Boohoo Man, Super Dry, Ray Nephew, H&M, um, TikTok, Taco Bell, Foot Asylum. Like I was, you know what I mean? I was doing my thing and then I finally got a deal. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm finally going to be able to get out of the room and whatever, whatever. And all because of that situation, what my mom did, I lost business. A huge amount of money. So I was, thinking, I, was, I was like, cool. I was like, cool. I firmed it. I was like, cool. I just prayed and I said, cool. Regardless, when it's my time, it's my time. And I just let it, like, I left it alone in it. And from that, I just said to myself, it doesn't make sense me continue to engage in this because if I can use that, imagine how many other people, like, how many, like, business is going to affect because people are coming up to me on the road saying certain shit and stuff like that. So I'm saying, cool, I'm not going to attach any more light to it because at the end of the day, if I don't address it, it just goes away. You know what I mean? I'm shining more light on it. I'm just addressing it. So just leave the situation alone. I just had to say, I'm going to protect myself because, like, 
me engaging in like me me even responding i allowed people to put my name in the title and just advertise certain things and it's like as much of like as, as much as like i went i did my live i said my point i did whatever i needed to do but still it still had an effect on me so i'm just like cool from that i'm not giving anyone the time of day ever and from that i just said i'm going to protect myself and protect, protect what i'm going on it's not everyone you pick about was wise and like you're not supposed to go to to with everyone sometimes you just let people think they've won in order to prosper. You know what I mean? So, yeah, leading up to all of that was going on. And obviously, me and my mom was in a bad place. She ended up saying that, oh, at the time, that's when I had said I was obviously molested and stuff like that, which I'll get on later on um, in the video. I don't really want to touch that yet. Um, but, um, yeah, it was leading up to my birthday. And I remember from that time, she said, obviously, she didn't want me seeing my sisters and stuff like that. So I wasn't able to see them and obviously that made me feel some type of way. So leading up to my birthday, remember around that time, it's always hard for me in it because obviously that's the time I was made homeless on my birthday. So leading up, like I'm deep in the fact that I don't have family, I don't have, you know what I mean? Like, even though I know the situation isn't perfect between me and my mom, that's, she's all I know in it. So despite whatever, like I've never hated my mom one time in my life. There's still that love there. I still remember the relationship that we once upon a time had when I was a kid in it. And that's the only person I know. For some reason, I don't know why, there's still that loyalty there. If I, if anything happens to my mum, I'm going to be there. So leading up to my birthday, cool. I felt some type of way because I'm thinking I'm reaching 21. Yet another birthday where I don't think I'm going to be, be able to enjoy my family around. I'm not able to see my sisters. I feel some type of way. I'm alone. And yeah, loneliness was killing me because at the end of the day, remember, I have a responsibility. I'm just going through that situation. I just lost a lot of money, deals. I'm thinking that, you know, my life has reached a halt again and all because of, you know, that person. So coming up to my birthday, missing my family. And I just said to myself, you know what? I'm going to do whatever I can do to just make myself feel better. So I threw a party within two weeks. So that party that I threw... I was just saying to myself that I'm going to just try to sound everything out. Like, I'm just going to get drunk on my birthday. I'm just going to enjoy myself. I'm just going to do everything. I really and truly, it was my birthday that I realized that there's no value at all in materialistic things or anything like that because I went through so much stress to throw that party. And I went in the party and I'm telling you, I looked around and I was so unhappy because I looked around and I didn't see my family. And I was thinking, yeah, like, people look at it, yeah, you look decent or whatever, whatever, but I'm telling you, like, it, it doesn't make sense having anything if you're not internally happy. And that's the day that I learned that it's so important to find your purpose and your happiness. Because I looked around and I was thinking, like, yeah, I don't really know these people like that. Yeah, these people have come out to support me, but they're not my family. Like, I want to see my sisters on my birthday. I want my mom, like, at least a hug from her or something. That's how I felt. So, I can't lie, I ended up bawling and I left the party. Lani came outside and she was like, consoling me you know she did, she made me lie down on her breast and she was like oh you know everything's gonna be okay and like she was i can't lie she more or less just said in a nutshell that maybe it's a reason why you're you're by yourself and she said not gonna lie like jay i'm proud of you because when you look at it you've had to grow yourself and you've taught yourself a lot and the person that you are today you should be proud of that because it's not like you had guidance. I didn't have anyone to tell me right from wrong or what to do or how to clean or how to cook or anything like that. I did that all myself. I figured that out all on my, like, all on my own, innit? Like, I've had to teach myself morals and values right from wrong. And she's like, oh, you know, I'm not going to lie for the fact that you've had to do everything on your own. You've done a good job. You should be proud of that. And the day will come where you will be, like, brought back to your family and stuff like that. But for right now, you're doing fine. And from that, I was like, you know what, you know, it made me feel good because, you know, words of encouragement and that. And then I go back in the... Actually, no, before I went back in the party, I can't lie. Um, I, it went worse. Like, I, I jumped in the car and I drove away in it because I was going to come back. I was saying to myself, I'm done. I was over for the night. And when I reached, like... I reached some distance away. I can't lie. I was starting to click to my head. I don't know if it was God or whatever. Something said to me that, not going to lie... All of these people came to celebrate your birthday with you. Your mum's not here and there's nothing that you can do about that. All you're going to do is sit down and be sad when there's people that actually genuinely left that house to like, celebrate with you. You need to go back because these people actually genuinely came out to say happy birthday and show you some love in it. So cool, I turned back around the car and I went back inside and I let that be that. 
And after that, you know, obviously I didn't feel good on my birthday, but I just tried to make the most out of the night and just celebrate with everybody. And I just showed face and I did my thing, put a smile on my face, even though I was feeling low and all that type of shit. I just showed my score on type thing. So I just did that. Cool. My sister's birthday is coming up. It was my sister's birthday. And I was kind of hesitant on reaching out because obviously things ain't good. But I called my sister, said happy birthday, and I get an invitation to come round. So we'll go around the house and yeah, like obviously I have this thing about me is that I want to protect the kids. I'm not going to go around there and give off any type of energy or anything like that. I want them to witness a healthy relationship as much as possible because my sister has seen enough. So I don't want to go around there and transmit any type of energy or like have any type of awareness with my mom for my sister to see because I saw how much that affected me as a child, didn't it? So I just made sure that, you know, hi, how you doing? How, how you doing? Giving my sister the happy birthday and just, you know, it's a little baby. It was a little baby's birthday. So just singing happy birthday and doing the thing. I saw comments, we had a conversation and she was like, oh, um, I'm not going to lie. I've been meaning to reach out to you. I wanted to wish you happy birthday, but um, I didn't know if, you know what I mean? And she's like, oh, um, I wanted to reach out to you and see if we can like whatever, whatever. And I said to her that um, I'm open to that. I've always been open to working on my relationship with my mum but the situation has always been whenever I've tried it's like there's always this oh I'm the parent anything goes type thing or like I'm that like, just because you're the parent she's allowed to do anything she wants to do and I'm supposed to suck up with it and then there's no form of accountability you just think everything you've done is just that and that should be it and I looked at her and I said not gonna lie if we're gonna start working on things again it has to be from a place we're, this this is no longer a mother and son relationship it's gone way past that I said right now we're two humans looking at each other right now we're strangers to one another so we need to start from scratch and we need to lay the foundation again and I'm not saying that the relationship will ever go back to the way how it is but I'm open to actually working on a relationship with you but we have to work through certain things first because every single time we try to work on it we don't address anything I'm not saying that we have to dwell on the past but we have to be able to create certain boundaries and respect goes both ways despite whether it's a parent and child you have to be able to respect me and my feelings because i am an adult i'm no longer under your jurisdiction so there still needs to be an element of respect i'm not going to disrespect you you don't disrespect me you respect the fact that i'm making like i'm making my way through life you i respect whatever you're doing i don't interfere in your relationship or anything like that so just don't like don't try to have the same approach as you did before so she's like oh yeah like yeah she she was happy with that more or less i just explained my boundaries because every single time i used to you know let my mom take the lead and say oh yeah we're gonna do this or whatever whatever and i said amongst this we're gonna need to do therapy as well we need to sit down in front of a counselor and let them kind of coach us through this as well because if i don't want to continuously come back try work in a relationship with you and then i get more scarred because i'm i've been hurt again do you know what i mean so yeah from that we said all right cool the energy was left on the fact that we was going to work on the relationship and that was that. So we had a conversation now. We scheduled, I think I scheduled a meeting with her and I went round to the house and we sat in the front room and um, we just kind of went over everything that's happened. And I said, obviously, you shouldn't have done that, as in what she did with the person I had an altercation with online, the back and forth with. And I said, you shouldn't have done that and stuff like that. And she's like, oh, she doesn't understand um, why. Wait, hold on, move. Your microphone is kind of doing some weird thing. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. No, she was like, um, I don't. Um, she's like, she doesn't understand why I do social media and why would you be so open and transparent with people that can be so negative and this is so basically my mom like our family background is quite very famous, right? But nobody knows, particularly with me. She didn't expect me to take that same direction. Neither did I. And my mom is like the person that likes her privacy as any Jamaican parent, they don't want certain things, don't carry your business at road and radiate it. I said to her, not gonna lie, if you didn't want me on social media, that would have never happened if I was still at home. I said to her that these people were there when you wasn't there. I said that these people, when I didn't have no family, it was their prayers and everything, all the like, all the love that they were showing me that actually kept me because I had nobody. And I had nothing to turn to but them. And they were there. You wasn't there. 
When I needed you, you wasn't there. When I was going through, when I was in hospital, you wasn't there. When I was, you know, when I need, like when I was hungry and all that, you wasn't there. They were there. It was them that I was talking to on a daily basis. It was them that was helping me heal. They were there. And she didn't understand that. And I said, I had nobody to turn to. I had no family, I had no friends. I was literally suffering on my own. And these people turned around and they prayed for me. They sent me messages, they did encouragement. Even the fact that I just stopped feeling alone in that, because I went through my whole secondary school year suffering in silence. And the fact that I didn't have to do that anymore. There's people out there that can genuinely like relate with me. That was a lot. And I said to her that, not gonna lie, my cousin was on the phone at the time. And I said, I feel like this was my calling. I remember I said this to you earlier. I felt like this was my calling because from the age of 13, I was baptized. And remember, growing up, I was in a disruptive household. It was quite abusive. It was very chaotic. I wasn't able to focus on my education. I was, you know, I was a kid raising a kid. I wasn't able to do that. I was working at the age of 13. It could have been very easy with the type of dynamic that I had growing up and the abuse and stuff like that. I could have turned anyway, but I turned to God. And from the age of 13, I got baptized. I could have went on the road, I could have done any of that, but for some reason, throughout my whole life, there's always been this joy and connection to God. And I don't know why I ran to God, but I just knew that because I wasn't happy at home, I just needed faith, I needed something to hold on to. And I feel like that's where it all started. And since the age of 13, since I got baptised, as I said to you, I've gone to so many different like spiritual people, pastors, evangelists, even if they're not ordained from God, people that message me in my DMs have all said, oh, I never used to understand it. Oh, you're going to be an inspiration to many. Your life is going to be a testimony. All that you're going through right now is for a reason. Remember, I'm a teenager, in it? So what are they really thinking? You know, them You know them pastors, you know when there's black Caribbean pastors, they always have this thing where, you know, young kids ain't going through nothing. What you got to worry about type thing. There's always that thing within them. But every person's like, yeah, your life, is, yeah, what you're going through right now, it's, it's, it's set you up. You're setting you up for a greater purpose. All, that's all I'm hearing over and over again. Even on social media, people that I don't know just messaging me the same thing, and I'm just thinking, all right, cool. So, so come so the very first day that I posted that homeless video, that's when I started living in my prophecy. The amount of people that has messaged me saying that, oh, they're going through the same thing, they're suffering in their household, they did like they felt alone, and oh, how much me speaking out has like helped them. And the fact that they've had somebody to speak to and ask for advice and stuff like that. Because a lot of people have nobody. People underestimate the, the, the feeling of isolation and being alone. You can be around people and feel so alone. And it's like the worst thing that can eat you up is not like life can change you in so many different ways. And when you're by yourself, it's so hard to keep yourself motivated. When, especially when nobody sees what you see or feel what you feel. You just feel so alone. And yeah, obviously me doing that, I can see that it was... It was helping me recover a lot because I wasn't by myself in it. it. It was my form of therapy, just releasing and let everything go because I had bottled up everything over a long period of time in it. So, yeah. And I said that to her, like, I felt like this was my calling and this is what like, God has called me to do. And everything that I've done on social media, I've always mentioned God. I've always remembered where I'm coming from. I have to big up God because despite whether I, like, wherever I go, I know that. God has brought me so far. Everything that I have is all because of God. He's kept me. Even now when, when I felt like, you know, why are you doing this? Because I looked at my man bad times and I have to be real in it. Like I really do look at God and I ask God, why me? Why am I going through all of this? But then I realised that I always come out on the situation on the other side and I just got to work with the process. I know that everything that I'm going through is for a reason. A lot of things I didn't understand. A lot of things I used to question, but I'm just working with it. And I just have faith. And from I've had faith, and not just in God, but in everything God has always kept me in it. And I explained this to her and she said, not gonna lie, I agree. So I thought that's where, you know, we clicked because I said to her that, you know, obviously where you're in your marriage and stuff like that, I completely respect that relationship and I'm even open, like I'm open to work, like not even working on a relationship with him, but I'm open to being cordial. Like I can say, say hi, hello. I was doing that and the guy wasn't paying me no mind and all that type of stuff. So. I just, you know, the really, that, that didn't end up working out because, oh wait, I'm going too far. But yeah, no, we had that conversation and I explained obviously what was going on and stuff like that. And we left that day on a thing where she understood and I explained to her about the fact that I was molested. And I told her I was molested by three different people. One of them being her brother. 
And obviously, I had said that at the time when I went on social media with and that was the first time it was mentioned. So at that time, you know, it was a topic that I had to discuss with her and I let her know that, not going to lie, yeah, I was molested by three people that she, had left, that she had left me with, one of them being her brother. And immediately, like, she got on the defence because the first time it happened was when I was three or four years old. And the first thing she tried to do was question the legitimacy of my memories and stuff like that. She was like, oh, how could you remember if you were so young and this is that and the next? So immediately I stopped her and I said, this memory, that memory, did this happen? Did that happen? She's like, yes. So I said, if I can remember all of that, what makes you think I can't remember being molested? I described, I described to her the exact scenery, what happened and stuff like that. And she looked at me and she was trying to make it seem as if I was saying these things, just trying to hurt her or get back her, get back at her or whatever. And I'm looking at her like, what pride could I ever have as a man admitting that I'd been molested? And for what? What do I gain out of that? And I said that the reason she was like, oh, why didn't you tell me? And I was like, how could I have told you if I was a child? Like I said to her, number one, one of the things is, Remember, these people you've left me with, I, as a child, you know, you trust them type of thing. As a child, you don't know what's right from wrong. You don't know what these people are doing. If, you know, if it's not hurting you, you don't know if it's wrong. It was only when I reached the ages of, you know, maturity and knowing what sex is and stuff like that, did I know that was wrong. Because nobody ever asked me any questions. Nobody investigated. Nobody told me. Do you know what I mean? As a child, you're not going to know, it Until you have certain levels of maturity yourself and you know what's right from wrong and what you shouldn't do and what sex is and what sexual assault is and stuff like that. And I told her the other two people and from that, it was just an instant thing where she shut it down. Like she didn't even, like she was just trying to make it seem as if I was lying. And I was like, cool. You didn't even try to investigate. You didn't even ask me if I was okay or give me a hug or anything like that. You just shrugged it off as if it was nothing. And she's like, why didn't I tell her? And I said, how could I have told you if me and you didn't have a good relationship? Why would I come and tell you? Because I knew that you would have this reaction. I said to her, you can't expect me to come to you as a son about something so serious if me and you didn't have that open relationship. Me and you wasn't able to talk growing up. Like, me and you had such a toxic relationship. Why would I feel safe? Was that door ever open? Did me and you even have conversations? Did, did you even ask me about my homework? How was school or anything like that? And I said to her, that door was never open for me to feel comfortable to ever speak to you about something like this. And then, yeah. And I said, it's not that you're a bad parent, but that's just what the situation was. And from that, obviously, we, she ended up apologising. And from that, the door was open for us to work on things. And I said, obviously, the next step is, let's just work towards counselling because I'm open I'm willing to make an effort with your husband or whatever. Um, no, at the time, her now husband, but at the time, they wasn't married, didn't I? I said, I'm willing, innit? It's for the sake of the sisters. I want them to grow up and witness a happy relationship and I don't want them to go through certain things. And I said, I don't want them to witness any more negative energy, negative tension between me and my mum. So that's why sometimes I just stay away. And I do feel bad, but that's just the best thing I have to do right now, just to maintain the peace. And um, yeah, since then, Shortly after, um, I was faced with eviction. And I remember, yeah, obviously, remember my birthday just happened. My sister's birthday would just followed up in June. So all around that time, you know, it's hard and stuff like that. And when I was hit with the eviction now, I can't lie, that one really hit me to the core because it was around the same time as last time, innit? And I was just getting myself on my feet and you know, at that point, remember I was helping somebody, so I've been drained financially. I'm drained mentally. I just went through a whole social media thing. My mom having that conversation, molested, opening up them emotions and stuff like that. Like a lot was going on, and then now to be hit with eviction straight after. That wasn't because I didn't pay no rent. There was a leak on the floor, and um, it was causing like the radiator was leaking, and it was leaking for a while, and I didn't say anything. But the floor was about to like basically sink in. And on top of that as well, with all that was going on on social media, um, my mum was calling my landlord, 
threatening to bring police round to the yard and this, this, that, and the next. And for me, it's one of them things where, as my mum, it's like, when is enough enough? You've kicked me out, I have a friend for myself. May I try work? You block it. You're now contacting my landlord and you're making situ. Imagine you're having your tenant and your mum and his mum is calling you, creating problems, threatening to do this, 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 that, and the next. And all along, I didn't know that the landlord and my mum used to speak. The man was a Jamaican man. I didn't know the man and the woman used to speak. So all this time, they've had con like they've obviously had communication. She has his number, so she's calling the man saying, oh, chat to him. Oh, I'm going to bring police around to the house. So it's making situations toxic and intense in the house, isn't it? Because the guy is putting me to the side saying that obviously he's putting him in an awkward situation and he's having to adjust. It just made things weird. So that from that, obviously, he's putting him in the middle. It makes him uncomfortable. The guy's not going to want me there. You hear me, In it. Like, the guy's not going to want me there. Imagine, I used to talk to you, me and you don't talk anymore. You're putting these in my house and you're then calling me and then creating problems on top of it. And on top of that, you have a new man and a baby. Yeah, it's a lot. So that's what caused the friction. Like, that, that, that's what also prompted the eviction as well. So I remember going through that time. Yeah, I was scrambling. I was trying to look for somewhere to live. I was going through the council and stuff like that. Nothing was helping. All the doors was being closed and I just went on social media. And I remember I just broke down because at that time, overwhelmed with emotions. So much things going back to back. It's all around the same time. And I'm asking God, why is this happening again? And yeah, I remember I sat down and I just, everything was resurfacing the PTSD and all of that type of stuff. And then, um, yeah, my mom calls me. I post it on social media, people offering to help and stuff like that. I didn't ask social media for help, number one. But thank you to everyone that did actually reach out and assist me through that because everything that you lots did, did help me survive, do you know what I mean? And I just have to say that from the get-go, like, I don't think you lots understand how much you lots have helped me during that process as well. You lots have been great. And yeah, my mum saw what happened on social media because someone said it to her. And she calls my phone and I didn't call, like when the eviction came, I could have called her, I could have got mad or whatever, whatever. I could have done all of that. I didn't tell her a thing. Remember at that time we was like working on our relationship, I could have called and asked my mum for money because my mum has it like that. And that's one thing people need to know. It's not like I'm coming from a struggling household. My mum has it like that. My mum's very comfortable. I didn't call my mum. I didn't, like the fact that we was working on relationship, like I didn't overset the boundary even though she's my mum and she did put me in this situation and call her and be like, oh, um, can you help me? This has happened. I didn't do that. I said, all right, cool. This is my situation. It's whatever. I'm going to deal with it. And I'm looking and whatever, whatever. She calls my phone now and she's like, oh, what's going on? And I'm like, what do you mean what's going on? Like, you know, not so aggressive, but like, I was like, what do you mean what's going on? She's like, oh, I heard um, something's going on. This is that the next. And I said, yeah. I let her know and I fill her, fill her in on what's going on. And she's like, oh, um, Immediately, I knew she only called because somebody told her. If she didn't call and somebody told her, obviously it would make her look some type of way as my mum in it. Like, I knew, I can sense that kind of vibe from the phone call. The only reason why you called is because somebody told you. Because she probably saw it herself already because she said that she's been following me on social media and whatever and she has one account or whatever. So she probably did see it, but the fact that somebody called her, she's going to call and make sure everything's good. So I on the phone and I'm just listening to it, like, just to hear what she's saying. And she's like, oh... Um, like what can I do to help so I'm just on the phone and I'm thinking like obviously in my head I mean I said this out loud but let's not be stupid I'm facing eviction I'm about to be homeless you know the situation is like you know I've been working it's not like I haven't been working I've been working my ass off but the, the current situation is helping somebody don't have money you know the only situation the only thing that you can do right there and then is either take me back into your house or you give me money we both know you're not going to take me back in the house so you know the only thing is money and i'm not going to ask you for that so she's like oh um so eventually she comes and says oh um what well, i do you need money because obviously i'm not going to say out my mouth and i'm not going to ask her for any help so she mentions money here it comes now how's money going to help you so i looked at my phone so confused in my head, I'm thinking, I didn't call your phone. I didn't ask you for no help. There's no other assistance that you can give me right now apart from money. You're gonna what, what is supposed to save somebody from being homeless? Money, innit? So why are you looking at me and you're telling me, how can money help you? I can't lie. I looked at the phone and right there and then I got upset. I said, through all you've put me through, 
I haven't looked around and I ain't ask you for no help. All that you've done, I ain't held you up in my heart or anything like that. And you still continuously, I've left you alone to live your life. And you still continuously interfere with my life to the point where you've not affected my house. You've kicked me out of my home. I've never been at home. Even when I was at home, you were still kicking me out. I haven't had a stable household. The one that I was trying to maintain for myself, I always made sure I was on time with my bills and everything like that. I always made sure that my rent was paid. I never owed nothing. Do you know what I mean? I stayed to myself. I didn't even interact with the guy as much. I made sure that I stayed in my room and I did what I had to do. Do you know what I mean? And then... Now, continuously, you picked, you picked, you picked, you picked to the point where you've now affected my home situation again. You're now calling me, yeah, when I didn't ask you for your help, telling, asking me, oh, how can I help? You know how you need to help. You then look at me, whilst I'm going through this situation, knowing that I'm not well as well, uh, telling me, oh, how's money going to help you? If you wasn't going to help me in the first place, why did you call my phone? Why didn't you just send me a text message saying that I see everything is going on, I hope you're okay? Leave it at that. Why did you call my phone? Why would you do that? Right there, that set me in one mood. Because remember, she's the trigger of everything happening the first time. I'm now going through the eviction again. And then you're coming to do this one more time. So from that, obviously, I hang up the phone. I said, not going to lie. You know, more happened. As in, she said more. And... Obviously, I don't want to go too into detail because this is not a video to bash my mum or anything like that. So I'm just keeping it to the facts and I'm just moving on because this is not a video where I'm trying to do any mix-up or anything like that. This is just me stating the story to just move on. So I'm not trying to, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to aggravate a situation here. So moving on, obviously, I'm looking, you know, I'm trying to look for somewhere to live and going down to the homeless shelter and stuff like that. I went there. Everyone knows there's one in Enfield called the John Wilkes House in Brotherton. Went there, that's where everyone was telling me to go. Went there and the place was closed. I remember I'd been trying with the council for the past three weeks now saying that, oh, they're going to help, they're going to help. And every time they're putting me through to somebody else to say that I don't meet this requirement, I don't meet this requirement. So the last thing was to actually go down there with all my stuff and say I have nowhere to go. So I go down there, the place is closed. I'm thinking, shit, like, what am I going to do? Because I only have like a week or so left to find somewhere to live. And obviously, that time was a whole lot of pressure. Like, I genuinely have no... I don't know what I'm going to do. And during that time, everybody on social media was having their opinions as well, which I kind of regret. Like, as much as I did receive help, but everyone's just going and like, oh, they ain't gone through their own situ situations and stuff like that. And people are making their judgments and stuff like that. And all that type of shit. So... I just remember feeling a lot of pressure, like I just got to find somewhere to live, I really want to find somewhere to live, I'm trying to do everything, look for jobs, everything, nothing's working, like, I didn't have a lot of time left, the guy had given me a month to leave, I have like literally, what, two weeks left, I've been trying with the council for the past three weeks, just trying to do stuff in it, and then I reached to that place, and I just remember, doors was closed, bro, my head shut down, I was stressing because I'm thinking, what's next, and then that's when I had a stroke, like literally right there and then. Because I was standing up, I looked at the closed door and I remember when I saw that the doors were closed and the fact that the place wasn't even open anymore, I just remember thinking to myself, what the hell am I going to do? What the hell am I going to do? And yeah, like immediately all the pressure just came crashing down and I just remember, yeah, the left side of my body went numb. My face dropped and I literally started having a seizure. And this was in the middle of the road because where the a building where the building was was on a road in it so it's like where all houses were so I was literally at the side of my car on the road literally having a seizure and um I stopped breathing during that time like everything was going on it's like I was conscious but I couldn't control my body and I couldn't breathe I couldn't open up my mouth nothing and people started coming out their house and they were rushing and I remember my eyes closed and I stopped breathing and I was so close to death people having to resuscitate me pushing on my chest and stuff like that till the ambulance came and yeah I was in the ambulance car and from that my health hasn't been the same and during that time, imagine, like, I'm still trying to find somewhere to live. I'm still... I'm still trying to figure out... Um, I'm still trying to figure out what the next step is. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have no one to lean on. And I just had that. And it's like, that was the worst time for anything to happen because I need I need to... I don't have no time to lie down. Do you know what I mean? Time is of the essence. 
So same time now, obviously, whilst everything is going viral on social media, the person that was helping their family from another country saw what was going on. And um, they said that they wanted to help. And, you know, you've been helping my family and stuff like that. And I thought it was God, didn't it? I was thinking, because, you know, I'm going through so much, finally somebody's come to help and whatever, whatever. And they said, go look for somewhere to live. This is how I'm getting to the story now of um, how I got into this place. They said to go look for somewhere to live and I'm going to help you pay the rent for maximum a year or until you get on to get on your feet. So if you get on your feet um, before a year, obviously you take over the responsibility. And obviously I said to myself that obviously time was of the essence. I wasn't like well or anything like that, but I'm not just going to jump at the fact that someone's offering help because anything can happen. So I took anything, everything down in writing. I said, oh, we're going to have to sign stuff. Emails were sent, documentation was sent, paperwork was sent. I was so safe. And, um, yeah, I ended up looking for somewhere to live. Found this place, but I was looking for bare places. And every time I go view, like someone, you know, the rent, the rent market at the moment is crazy. So every time I was going to go view somewhere, somebody had really taken it. Um, there was no, there was nowhere, nowhere that I could afford, not even a room. Everywhere was just gone. And then remember, I only had like a week left. So yeah, they sent over everything. I was skeptical. I said I didn't want to do it because at the end of the day, you know, when you're renting, that's a lot of responsibility. I don't want to be in rent arrears. I've never owed rent. I'm careful. One thing about me before I put my name to anything, when I just get up under things, I'm very scared. So I said, yeah, after seven minutes, I have to do the way I was being scared. They were even thinking like, wow, what do you think I'm going to do? And there was a reason why I had to be so careful. So I find a place now and obviously um, we have viewed places and I found this one. And the day that I found this one was the day I was supposed to leave. And obviously because I had all the documentation, I was able to, you know, get the place or whatever, whatever. And the first month's rent and deposit was paid. And somebody from social media sent me some money as well, which also helped me move. I'm being fully transparent here. Now, remember what I said before at the beginning of the video. You don't know what baggage people are carrying and be careful of who you invite into your space because shortly after that time, and I'm not, if you, shortly after that time, the person that I was helping, certain things started to arise about them that I didn't know. And God said, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. If you're around certain people and they're doing certain things, the association can make you look bad. Being affiliated with something, be careful with who you affiliate yourself with. And certain things had started to arise about the person and I don't live certain lifestyle. So certain lifestyles that they were living, I don't live that same kind of lifestyle and it was really starting to affect me on what I was going on. And then shortly after that, them and the person that was helping, the family member that was helping them pay, like helping me pay the rent, um, they ended up into an argument. So the disagreement happened. The following month came, no money. So I'm looking around now and I'm thinking, you know, thank God I save because at the time, remember I was still doing stickle social media, so promo, I saved. But I remember looking to God and I started crying because I was thinking, that I had that at that time I had to cry, I can't lie. Because imagine, I'm, I'm still haven't recovered from health problems or nothing like that. Like, I still haven't gotten a break. I just moved, everything. I just had a stroke and seizure. Like, I'm, my body's exhausted. I need rest. I haven't had a time to literally, like, just even breathe a day so I could even just lie down and cool off. And the, and the second month came, and no money came. If not, like the person lives in the UK where I can go knock on their door and say, yo, where I go and whatever, whatever. They live abroad. And I paid it. And obviously when I paid it, oh, going back, I had to ask the person to leave in it. Like, obviously the person that was staying with me, they had to go because at the end of the day, certain things that they were doing like like i just gotta say you lots don't see me around that person now so just please leave it like you lots realize anyone there's a reason why i don't have an issue with cutting off people because at the end of the day i've got to protect my energy and my space 
and I feel like where I know my mission and purpose in life, I don't want anyone to come and sabotage that or you know, if somebody is living a particular type of lifestyle, that's for them to go and live. But I know what kind of journey I'm, I'm on and I don't want to mix with certain type of people. And not going to lie, like, at the end of the day, like I said, your environment is very important and you've got to very, be careful of who you're around because if people don't pour into you and they're into, they're into certain things, I'm telling you, that's going to reflect. People are going to talk. Things are going to happen. Do you know what I mean? You've got to be careful of who you surround yourself with. Family, friends, whosoever it may be because at the end of the day, like... That's where I learned. It's not everybody you make friends with. It's not everybody that, because you don't know what baggage people are carrying and that's why you lots don't see me around many people. Because you don't know people until certain, you know what I mean? And obviously where I was hearing certain things I didn't know before and stuff like that, yeah, I don't live, you know, I'm a very, Wherever I don't have, I do without. Do you know what I mean? And I've always been there. And I was always happy in that room. I was very content with that. Do you know what I mean? Not happy in the room, but that was my for now. I knew that I had to do things the right way, work hard, before I'd be able to get somewhere like this. So I, was, I, was, I was always saying to myself, I didn't rush. I'm not a person that will look and try and get more than what I have. I'm not one of them people that will sit down and, you know, wish for things and, and red-eye people for their things. I'm very cool with waiting my turn. Do you know what I mean? Because I've always had to do that. I don't have to work hard to get certain things. So I wasn't in a rush for this place or anything like that. And I remember when I even got the keys to this place, This was the same exact place I've been praying for since, you know, I was made homeless. Since that day, I was praying and I was so specific to God exactly what I wanted because I sat down and I visualized it and I said, and I, and I sat down and I prayed every day, every day, every morning I woke up and I said, God, Please remove me out of this place because the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Stay close to the vine, ask what you want and you shall receive. If you move away from God, that's when he will discard you and throw you into the fire. You've got to stay close to God at all times. You have to stay close to God for, for, in order for him to, to be able to guide you. And like, yeah, I'm just one of them people where I just wait for God to just say yes before I do certain things. And where it came to this place, I was happy with waiting my turn. So that's why I was made sure, like that's why I made sure I took every safety precaution, like making sure certain sick, like she was signed and stuff like that, and all that type of stuff. And obviously, yeah, now the responsibility has been left on my head for me to handle this place. And I looked around and I said, you know what, this is the place that I've prayed for all along. The exact vision that I had, this was the place. And although I didn't get it the right way per se, or when it was the right time. This is my home, and this is the first time I've ever felt at home. This is the first time I've had a home. Do you know what I mean? When I was at home with my mum, it was so disruptive. I used to come home late at night just to avoid, you know, certain confrontation. I'll go to work, come home late when everyone's sleeping, and then when I wake up, I know my mom's gone, so there's no interaction, there's no beef, there's no nothing. I used to go to lengths. I used to go to her friend's house instead, just to, you know, chill there for a bit, just so, you know, she and her guy can do whatever, and they have their time, and then I just come home in the middle of the night, and I just creep, I bathe, I go to sleep, and then I get up, go to school, and then I work again, and then I just go to the, her, my auntie's, quote, go auntie's house, stay there for a bit, then go home, just to avoid and this is the first place I've ever been able to just call my own and be at home. And it was everything that I visualized and whatever. And I said, it's my responsibility. I could have got mad. I could have done all of that. But I said to myself, do you know what? I brought myself this far. It's my responsibility. And I'm going to do whatever I can do. And since that day, I've hustled. I've looked for jobs and I wasn't able to get jobs. Remember, I was kicked out at the age of, you know, 18, 2019. I haven't worked a job since 2019 because I lost my job because of my mom. And obviously from that, I was going through a lot of health problems and stuff like that. So there's this huge gap in my employment from 2019. Obviously, I've been on social media. This is the way I've been sustaining myself and this is the way how I make money. And yeah, like that's not viable work experience to them because I haven't been employed by an actual company so where I do have certain skill assets like creative directing film this is that and the next and you know different management this is that and the next that could be essential for PR HR like you know them key jobs that are getting paid a lot I just don't have the actual I don't have a reference what's my reference my YouTube videos so 
every time I be applying for jobs, I'm not getting them. I've applied for 150 jobs, literally, through my emails. That's all you can see, job applications. I ain't got one, not even an interview. So I'm thinking, how am I going to get paid? How am I going to pay the rent? I, I was panicking, but from that, I got into my hustler mood. I said, I have rent to pay. I started a food business. Those of you lots that have been on my TikTok see that you lot see me cooking and stuff like that. Yeah, that wasn't just for show. I was literally learning how to cook so I can pay my rent. I stood up in the kitchen and I got to work. And I started cooking, I started advertising my business and I did what I had to do and I was making ends meet and I was just praying that God would see me through because I don't know where the money would come from. That's why you lots didn't see me active on social media like that. I was posting but I wasn't really doing my content too tough because I wasn't going to come on social media and tell you guys what was happening again. Like I didn't want to do that. Number one, I can't lie, I was quite embarrassed because as safe as I thought I was being, like I was still struggling and I didn't want to come back and sing the same song. So. All along, I've been struggling in silence, just trying to make ends meet. And I started a food business and I started selling it. It was me cooking, it was me delivering, it was me packaging. It was me answering, the I was doing everything. And I remember, like, the business, I've been able to, you know what I mean? It, it, it's been able to make ends meet. And I was doing that. And I remember that's what saved me the next month. Shortly after that, I ended up in hospital because I was overworking myself. Because I was stressed in it, bills are coming through water counters, all that type of stuff. And I'm that, type, I'm that type of person. If I know I've got stuff to do, I can't sit down and just whatever. I know I have to because I've got no one else to rely on. There's no one that I can ask to save me. Like, this is my responsibility. This is my home. So I'm going to do everything I can to sustain it. This is the first time I've ever felt at home. The first time I've ever been able to just, you know what I mean? Like, have somewhere that I can take care of, be clean and, and just cook food and just feel safe. This is the first time I've ever felt safe. And for it to be the exact place I ever envisioned for myself, I'm just thinking, yo, like I've built attachment to this place. So I said, I'm going to take pride in it and I'm going to do what I have to do. So since that, I've been doing what I have to do, doing whatever hustles I can do, like starting different businesses just to make sure I can sustain. And it's been so difficult because it's been just me. Like, honestly, I don't know how I've been doing it. It's only been faith. Because it's been hard. It's not like, you know, I've ever had a break since a child I've been on the go. Like, I haven't had a time to breathe or even just process anything that I've been through. It's just been back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back. Not even just a second to just kind of take it, nothing. It's just been back to back. And sometimes I genuinely feel like I'm drowning. I don't know how to... But then I look at myself and I also say to myself, I'm proud because despite whatever I've gone through, the fact that I don't receive any type of help, like the fact that I've done this all on my own, I'm, I'm actually happy that I've been able to stand here today, that I haven't like allowed my situation to change my heart towards people and all that type of stuff. I feel like I've done well for the fact that I've been struggling for so long. People can't look at me and tell what I'm going through because I always do my best. I always try and make ends meet. I don't sit down and rely on nobody. I do what I have to do. So it's like, when I do what I have to do and I'm going through life, just let me do my thing. I don't need anyone to come and trouble me. And, like, I just don't need none of that, man. I, I'm very careful with my energy and my space. I'm very protective of that because I know what people can do. I've been fucked over enough times. And it's like, I'm just exhausted. Exhausted, 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 exhausted. That's why you, man, don't see me around many people. That's why I'm very careful. Of, like, I've had negative experiences. I have trust issues. I don't trust people like that because... I've been fucked over so many times. I ain't been able to live my life. I've just been surviving. Surviving. Not knowing how tomorrow's going to go. Every day I'm waking up unhappy because I'm, I know I'm having to struggle again. And I look around and I'm grateful. The fact that I'm even able to struggle in a place like this, it could have been so much worse. That's why I always get up and I thank God for the house that I have. The fact that I have the things that I have. Because at the end of the day, it could have been worse. I, even though, that's why I always say to you lots, don't ever look at me and idolize me. My life is not perfect and I'm showing you guys that. You see the way how I sit down and I look like this right now? Don't judge a book by its cover because you don't know the story. You don't know how people get their things. You don't know how people is doing anything. Everyone has their own struggles that they're going through. You watching this right now, you have your own struggles going through. You don't know how people are making it through life. And me, I just, I'm holding on to faith. Not just in God, but I've had to have faith in my vision. That's what keeps me going. It's not like I have a, a child to keep me motivated or anything to live for. It's just faith and God. It's just faith and God. That's all I've had to hold on to. 
and I'm proud because I'm I, when I look at it, I used to really. But I'm happy with the fact that, despite what might happen next, I know I've done my best. I've done my best. I can look at myself and say I'm proud because I've done my best. I've been able to say sustain myself for this long. I don't owe no rent. My landlord wants me to stay another year because I've taken care of this place. You get me? I value things. I know what it's like. I've gone through certain things. And even when it comes to my mum, like, going through certain things in my adulthood, I can understand why she's turned out a certain type of way. That's why I can't hate her. Because who feels it knows it, you get me? And as an adult, it can be very easy for me to have some, like, hate in my heart towards her because of all that. But I don't. Because I've been through adulthood myself, so I can see why. But I just have the maturity to know to do better. You know what I mean? To not allow to not allow the generational curse to continue with me. I want to be the change. And that's why I get up every day to fight, because I, I owe something to myself. I owe something to myself. And that's why anyone that comes around me, I tell you, listen. I'm on a journey, innit? If you're, if you're coming as a friend, anybody... Let me know what you're on because at the end of the day, I'm on my, my journey of healing and I'm trying to go somewhere. I've struggled for too long and I'm not trying to struggle anymore. I'm trying to get to work so I can be comfortable, so I can actually feel all right for one day. I'm not worried. Some days I'm in here and I don't eat and stuff like that because I'm so stressed. Sometimes I can't even afford it, but God delivers right on time. And that's why I keep it real with you lots because you lots look at look at people's life and love the one and say, you know, you lots are perfect and this is that and the next and you love to assume and idolise. Don't idolise what people have. A lot of you lots will look at me and think, oh, you're put together. Would you lots know the half of it? You want to be real? The clothes that I have, they're all free. They give it to me to wear. You lots think, oh, man's got money like that. No, when you get little views, the people that want you in at them clothes, so they send you clothes for you to wear, and I take pictures of it, and I look nice. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to look my situation. If I can look, listen, anything can happen. Anything can happen. I can go and roll down, drop down. I'm not going to let anybody school me, bro. Not going to happen. If my, if, if my environment is bad, and I know I'm going through struggles, I'm not going to look bad. I'm not going to look how I feel. That's just never been me. I'm going to show good face and I'm going to do what I have to do because I'm not going to let anyone come and take pity on me because I'm still trying. Um, so, um, it's been so hard to not allow my circumstances change my heart towards people because I feel like, yeah, like I said, when you're going through my shit, it's easy to turn the other way, but it's God that I'm holding on to. It's... God is the reason why I'm standing here today and I know that with all my heart nobody can tell me God ain't real because the amount of times that man has shown up right on time and he's kept me till today some days I just genuinely don't know but it's just prayer it's God it's, he's the only person I have do you know what I mean somebody up there is doing something and yeah like when I look around as much as I do not like the circumstances and wish I wasn't the one that God chose to make an example out of when it comes to certain things. I'm grateful for the experience because it has built me into the person I am today. It's built me, it's given me morals, it's given me values, it's given me life lessons. It's, and that's why it's like, that's why I feel like everyone should look for a lesson in whatever they're going through because there's always a lesson. And as I said earlier on, you're going to continue going through what you're going through until you learn your lesson. You need to go through. Sometimes you need the experience. You need the experience. You need the training because God is doing something within you. I learned that the reason why I'm alone is because it's not everyone supposed to see certain things that's going on with you. I realise that God has taken me away from everyone so I can go on my journey, I can do certain things. It's not everyone's supposed to see certain special things that God has planned for you. Sometimes you have to keep your mouth shut and just go through because evil eye is real. Evil eye and bad mind, like everyone has the potential to do it, even family. That's why you've got to be careful of who you tell things to because people can, dream, can be dream killers. Not everyone has their head screwed on, not everyone is like you. And that's what people need to understand. Stop forcing people to be like you. 
You can't force your family to... I, I used to try to force my mum to be somebody that she's not. And that has to be within her own time. Everyone has to go through their own... I'm going through my own phase right now. I'm going through my own character development and stuff like that. I'm going through it, but at least I know I'm not perfect. I'm willing to change. I've always been willing to change. I know I'm not a perfect person. And because I wake up every day and I know that I want to do better... I know already that gives me purpose. If you get up every day and you want to do better and you're not happy with your life, that means you have purpose. That means you have purpose. If you get up every day and you know there's something that you're working towards and you know you want to be better and you have visions of the person that you want to be, that is purpose. That is God showing you that you have purpose. And that's what I hold on to. There's, there's, a, there's a reason why you get certain visions. There's a reason why. There's a reason for everything. You need the experience for the next stage in your life. And I can't stress enough. One of the lessons I've learned over this past year. Be careful of people. Sometimes it's good to be by yourself. You don't know what energies are out there. Out in that world so much is going on that you don't know about. You don't know what baggage people are carrying, what spirit, what energies. You don't know. And you never know a real person until you hate them, until hate's there. You never know. So in this life, you just got to make sure you're good and don't be dependent on anybody else. But in fact, I can't lie, at times you have to put yourself first. Always be willing to help somebody else. You always have to. But you have to put your feelings and priorities first because at the end of the day, it's your life. You've got to work through certain things. A lot of people are out there just throwing their traumas on people. Hurt people hurt people. And it doesn't make sense you still being hurt and transmit that and going around people. Spend some time to work on yourself. A lot of people don't know themselves. And one thing I've, get, I've been grateful for, as much as, you know, I've been alone and it's been hard, this has given me time to really find myself, to know what I want in life, what I don't want in life. And the key thing is just protect your energy and keep going. Just pray, have faith. Be protected. Like you got to understand, if, you, if you've identified the fact that you have purpose, don't let any and anyone around you. Don't. you got to be careful. It's not everyone you invite into your house. It's not everyone you meet with. It's not everyone that means you well. And it gets to a point in life where you've got to decide that you want better for yourself. You've got to decide that you want better for yourself. It's your life. And that's why I'm sorry. Anyone that enters into my life, there's boundaries. You've got to understand that. Listen, it's either you come on something serious, you've got friendship, whatever, relationships, whatever, it's all applicable. That like anyone that is around you, if you're not positive, if you don't push me, if I don't want to be a better person because of you, then you've got to go. What's the sense of having certain conversations, even with certain family members? Sometimes certain family members only call you to just gossip. How is that helping your life? Are your friends pushing you? Are they pushing you? Are they asking you what is it you want to do? Are you are you growing as a person? Sometimes you really got to look around at your environment and say, am I growing here? Because at the end of the day, none of us can look and say we're comfortable in life. So why are you stopping to enjoy yourself just yet? You're going into certain habits that you shouldn't be going into because of the wrong company. You know that's not you. I'm speaking to myself now. Because there are certain habits I've, I've picked up being around the wrong people. But I've had the knowledge of myself to know that I've had to remove certain people out of my life in order to... Not only against them, but when you're on a purpose, some people just come in their life to teach you a lesson. And that is so true. And my life has been a testimony to that. And sometimes you just have to do certain things on your own. You have to go through the journey and link up with everyone else at the end. And I realised that you have to be comfortable alone because you can't rely on anybody else to bring you happiness. You can't rely on anybody else to build you. You have to lay your foundation on your own. So that way you're good regardless. Nobody else can say they did that but you. Self-worth is important, self, all of that. And every day I fight because I know I have a purpose. 
this house is a struggle. My life isn't perfect. It's all rough, but I'm still grateful to God. I ain't failed yet. He ain't failed me yet. I'm still going. I'm still fighting because I have to. And I just ask, when you see people on their journey, leave certain people alone. Don't go and interfere. I, don't, I hate when people see people on their journey and try to interfere. Low people, make them go through. Because you don't know what, they, what they've been through to even just start the journey. Starting the journey alone is hard. Like I said, that's why I'm very militant about my energy and my space and who I have around me because at the end of the day, everything's got to make sense. I know I put my 110% into people and I should, that's how I am in it. That's just how I am. That's why I, will, I can't change my life. That's how I've always been. I always try to be bugged to build and try to help build people, give people business. That's how I am. I don't expect anything back. But you just got to realise that not everyone has the same heart as you. Don't force people to be something that they're not. If you see a friend and not progressive, don't force them. It's got to be their choice. Everything in life is a choice. Everything is a choice. You can decide to be better today. It's about what you do next. And I've never been scared to start over. I stopped being scared to start over. I used to. But just realising with starting over, you can only make progress. So yeah, that's my life update. Um... The battle continues. I'm just trying my best. I'm just trying my best. And it does feel very isolating to be a bit different because, you know, everyone's just able to enjoy themselves and do what they want to do and I'm just way more serious with it. And that's just, that's just my life. My life has been serious. Nothing to joke about. I ain't had a childhood. I ain't been able to enjoy my adulthood. I'm still surviving. But I just know one day I'm holding on to the hope and I'm having faith that I'll be able to just live my life and stop surviving. So, yeah. <sighs> Hope you guys like, comment. If you're new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. And, yeah. I had to just release this. So, again, I appreciate every single one of you guys. You know, it's on my family. And I appreciate you guys, honestly, from the bottom of my heart. Love, and I'm out.